Texas. Welcome, Dr. Pittman, to the download. Dr. Pittman is the Chancellor of St. Louis Community College. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tabitha. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, we, we definitely enjoy our partnership with the St. Louis Community College. So Dr. Pittman, please share a little bit about the Community College with us. Well, St. Louis Community College was founded in 1962. Uh, it's the largest community college system in the state of Missouri. We serve approximately 50,000 credit and non-credit students annually. Uh, we have four campuses. Uh, one up at Ferguson, our Forest and Valley campus, our downtown campus, Forest Park. A little bit to the south, we have our Merrimack campus in Kirkwood or Webster Groves. And then out in West County, we have the Wildwood campus. We also have three learning centers. Um, another downtown center is the Harrison Educational Center. We have the Center for Workforce Innovation up in Ferguson, close in proximity to our Little Valley campus. And we also have the South County Educational Center uh, down toward Jefferson County. And what location are you based? I'm at our corporate college location in Bridgeton, uh, just off McKelvey Road. And ah. we sold our building. We were located downtown at the COSAN Center. Um, and we recently sold that building as we had available space here and we've leased the entire third floor to SSM. They're a great um, partner, a great training partner with us. Um, and now uh, they, they're, they, some of their work is here in this building as well. Uh, so we're, we're tickled to have them as a tenant and makes this building much more functional and usable. So we're glad to be here in Bridgeton. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So tell us a little bit about the changes to higher education right now. Well, there are a lot of changes rotating around the pandemic, obviously, but more longer term changes. Um, community colleges in particular, we're working on a rather large project. It's called the Guided Pathways Movement. Um, about 300 community colleges across the nation now are engaged with that. St. Louis Community Colleges has been working on Guided Pathways for a long time. It's a very comprehensive approach to a change in how community colleges serve students and serve their communities. Uh, but we're putting a lot of focus on um, student completion. Uh, community colleges for years have been there for students and their, their completion rates hasn't been at the, the rate that we would like to see them. Um, but since I arrived here in 2015, we've been working on implementing a lot of best practices that we've seen just in the last five years, really big increases to our student completion rates. Um, so a focus on the student when they first enter the doors of the community college, helping them with career exploration so they can kind of start getting a picture of what their goal is in mind, uh, or what they have in mind for a career. Uh, if it's transfer to a four-year institution, that's great. Uh, we work more closely now with the four-year institutions than we do in the past. But we also know that the middle skill job arena in Missouri, it's the largest sector of new jobs that's coming in over the next 10 years. So aligning our students with high wage careers is incredibly important going forward. So we spend a lot more time on the front end with students, helping them with career exploration. Uh, we're spending a lot more time and effort on academic advising, and we're going to a caseload model. So Every student has an assigned advisor so we can track them, not only through registration, but through some of the complexities of Title IV funding and the FAFSA that they all get to complete, um, and then track them as they progress. Uh, we're also looking at our, our degree programs and how we teach students um, at the community college level. So all of the courses and programs are interconnected um, and provide students with more clear pathways so they don't waste any time working on their educational objective or take too many credit hours or take too much time to move from point A to point B with their educational objective because there's just too many jobs available right now in these high wage careers uh, that we need to get students moved toward. So this is a, that's a very comprehensive change. Uh, I tried to state in just a few minutes, um, but we're really excited to be a part of that. Well, as a parent, 
I'm a junior in high school and we are looking at opportunities for college that that's music to my ears because it's so overwhelming but it sounds like the, the community college has a clear pathway for students to come in to make it a, a seamless process. Yes, and we have, I give you the best example I give is our daughter, Brianna. Um, she's an early college student at Wildwood. She would be a senior at Eureka this year, uh, but she started the early college program out of Wildwood. So the early college program begins at the junior level for high school students um, if they're interested and obtaining college credit earlier. And we have, within the region, we have several districts that we're engaged with now with early college. So we've had the last two years since we began this program several years ago, we simultaneously have students walking for their high school diploma and associate degree at many of our commencements. So that's really cool. We set them all together because they're very uh, loud and excited <laughs> during commencement. I really miss commencement this year. That's one of the funnest parts is watching the early college kids, uh, everybody's a kid to me now, but go through and get their diploma. Um, so it really gives the students and the parents a jump start. Um, many of those early college students do transfer to four-year institutions. Uh, some go directly into the workforce, but um, it just, it's basically as we cooperate with the school district, they, they complete an associate degree with no cost to the parents or the student and no debt. So it's a great thing for high school kids and students uh, to consider such an option. Certainly, you know, I'll always uh, promote St. Louis Community College for any student wanting to get a bachelor's degree, associate degree, or whatever their educational objective is. Well, as a parent, that is music to my ears. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the pandemic, because you've made a few comments about the changes. Can, can you share with us how St. Louis Community College is dealing with the pandemic? Yes, well, we've, we've made some dramatic shifts in modalities or the way that we teach students. Um, starting this past spring, we obviously had to shift to an online environment. Um, the summer term was 100% <clears throat> online. And for the fall semester, out of the 2,300 or so course sections that we offer, only about 35% of those have some type of on-ground or face-to-face -face component. In other words, we're doing the majority of these classes online. Uh, we're using a modality called live virtual lecture, which is much like the modality we're in right now, where the um, instructor is meeting with the students real time on a Zoom call. We use a different product than Zoom, but it's basically the same thing. Um, so that the students have the ability to ask questions, interact real time with the instructor. We also utilize a large array of online modalities where they're asynchronous. In other words, they're not real time, but students log in to do their assignments and read their course materials each week. Um, they're, they're tracked by faculty to make sure they're staying on track with completing their homework and taking their exams. Um, so that modality is picking up a lot of uh, interest right now. Then we do a hybrid approach where <clears throat> most of the on-ground classes have a hybrid online component um, where they're getting all of the lecture or didactic portion of the courses online, but then they're coming to campus a few times a semester to complete labs or clinicals um, for their particular major. Um, you know, a best example I can give you is um, in nursing, you know, we, we can have students come to campus, but only in groups of nine or 10. Um, so that's really kind of limits our, our production of our career programs for the time being, but we think that's the safest option for the students and the faculty. And we're, we're very, very um, wired into how students are doing the number of cases across the district that are occurring. Uh, so far, we've been very uh, blessed with very few cases. I think we have fewer than 10 cases that have been reported across the district. So we're very, very happy about that. But we also don't have, don't have to contend with residential halls and things that other universities do. You're lucky in that respect. Yes, yes. So you, you've hinted a little bit about um, healthcare and education. So let's talk about this new building in Forest Park. Can you share with us what's all the commotion about? 
Oh yeah, that's a phenomenal building. I'm really, really excited to talk about that building. We, um, we looked at our healthcare programs at the Forest Park campus and realized we needed to do something. We were in antiquated facilities. Um, they all contained asbestos and remodeling them was very expensive. The Forest Park campus is also somewhat of a unique design if you've ever looked at that campus with the long, narrow buildings. Uh, so we decided to put up a new building there and tear down a big part of the old tower along Highway 40. So this has made a kind of a stunning visual change to the campus. Uh, we created a new front door uh, that goes, there's a new drive that goes right by the new building uh, into the campus. But we moved 13 of our healthcare programs into the new building. It's approximately 96,000 square feet. Uh, the building was completed last year and it's up and running. Um, we've expanded every degree program we have in that building. Uh, it's, it's enrollment capacity. And we're building some short-term programming space on the fourth floor, even though we're operating the building, we white box the fourth floor out to listen to what the hospitals say their greatest needs are. Uh, so we're putting a lot of short-term types of training programs in, for example, patient care technician or medical assisting that they're stackable credentials as well. So students can go through a short-term program, get into a well-paid job immediately, and then be able to continue their education in other healthcare programs. We call that approach meta majors. Uh, so it, it's approach we're taking across the district. And we've expanded, for example, nursing at all four of our campuses. Um, and it's a new program to the Wildwood campus that just started this fall. So we're, we're getting a lot of interest in our healthcare programs. The hospitals are our biggest champions right now with this expansion. Because as you know, being in the middle of a global pandemic, um, healthcare is incredibly important. And then you have a lot of people like myself, Tabitha, that are baby boomers that are moving into that stage of life where we need more healthcare. <laughs> so we know there's a big population shifting into that area where there's going to be really high needs in the types of programs that we offer. Well, Dr. Pittman, you have just an abundance of things going on at the St. Louis Community College. And it, it, it's just, it's amazing. So if people wanna get in touch with a community college, what is the best way for them to reach out? Uh, you can reach out, you can start at our website. Um, okay you know, at www.stlcc.edu. Uh, you can always uh, find me or any of our staff on the website, and we would be glad to talk with you about the programs and services that we offer at the college. Wonderful. And we'll put all this information in the show notes too. Dr. Wonderful. Pittman, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks for inviting me to participate. Of course, our pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.